the one who has memorized the most of the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And there is no dispute in this regard. I'm sure many of us have heard when we listen to the hadith, وَعَنْ أَبِي هُرَيْرَةَ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ قَالَ قَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمُ It is narrated by Abu Hurairah رضي الله عنه May Allah be pleased with him that he heard the messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم say and then we've heard so many different versions and words and so many different ahadith. This man was a powerful, powerful individual in memory and he was a very humble person. So let us learn more about who is Abu Hurairah. Remember, رضي الله عنه means may Allah be pleased with him. So it is actually a dua. So we could comfortably say that he is a person whom we pray for the most. Because so many times we say Abu Hurairah رضي الله عنه and we don't even realize that we've actually made such a powerful prayer for him. May Allah be pleased with him, with them all and with us as well. I mean, his name was Abdul Rahman ibn Sakhr. It is reported that he before Islam was called Abdu Shams, the worshipper of the sun. So when Muhammad ﷺ met him, he said, Anta Abdul Rahman, you are the worshipper of Ar Rahman. And from that day, obviously, he was known as Abdul Rahman ibn Sakhr. So where did he get the name Abu Huraira from? When he was young, he had a little kitten that he used to play with. And he was very attached to this kitten. So his friends used to call him owner of the kitten or Abu Huraira in other words Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam later on at some stage called him Abu Hir because Hir is a bigger cat so to speak and Huraira is a little small kitten may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us this was a pen name and I hope that when we have pen names for each other we have good names not name like fatty and so on which are actually quite disgusting if you were to ask me. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us. Sometimes we choose names for our friends that are actually raw when it comes to meaning. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to choose the best of names uh, if we were to choose nicknames. Remember, a nickname is not prohibited on condition that the person you are calling likes the name. If they don't like the name, it is totally prohibited and it can become a major sin. May Allah protect us. So Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu, there was a leader of his clan or his tribe, one of the leaders of his tribe, a Dawus. He came from the Dawusi clan. One of the leaders, his name was At-Tufail ibn Amr. At-Tufail ibn Amr, he came to Mecca at one stage and the people of Quraysh told him in the early days of Islam that don't listen to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because he's a magician. And the minute you hear him, he will have an impact on your heart and you will start creating problems for your family and there's going to be big dispute and so on. So Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was busy in uh, Mecca al Mukarrama reading Salah and this man had put cotton wool in his ears because he was so conned about Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam being a magician. At-Tufail ibn Amr says, I put cotton wool in my ears and then when I was near the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, meaning the Kaaba, he says, I heard this Quran being read by Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa and I went close and it was so sweet, so powerful, so full of meaning, so correct, so accurate that I went to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa and told him, do you know what? What is it that you have brought? So he spoke to me for a little while and immediately I told him, I bear witness what you've come with is the truth. This is really the truth. So he accepted Islam and he went back to his people of Dos and he started calling them towards Islam. It is reported that initially very few people accepted Islam, two members of his family and this young man, Abu Huraira, radiallahu an. He was a young man and he had accepted Islam at the hands of At-Tufail ibn Amr al-Dawsi, radiallahu an. And later on, just after the battle of Khaybar, At-Tufail ibn Amr came to Medina Munawwara and with him was Abu Hurairah radiallahu an and a few others. So he had come to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu had come just after this battle of Khaybar. And Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu sat with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and did not miss anything from Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Every time he heard something, he would memorize it. And he was a poor man. He had no family. He had no wealth. So much so that he says, one of the miracles of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu says, I was so hungry that 
I once was wishing for some food and I saw Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu an. I asked him a question, hoping that perhaps he might say, come home. But he didn't say, come home. And I asked Umar ibn al-Khattab a question when he passed, hoping that he might say, come home. But he did not say, come home. And I saw Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa and he told me, come home, subhanallah. So when I went to his house and I entered the home, I saw a little bit of milk there. And I was hoping that he would tell me, drink some of this milk. But he told me, he asked his family, where did the milk come from? So they answered him. So he says, oh, Abu Hurairah, go and call the people of Sufa. Now the people of Sufa were the poor from amongst the Sahaba. And Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu says, as much as I wanted the milk, I had to obey the instruction of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa So I went out and I called the people of Sufa. They came and each one of them drank from that little pot. And they all had drank from the milk. And I was hoping that now the milk would come to me. But when they were finished, it went back to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa And he looked at me then and he says, Oh, Abu Hurairah, you haven't drank from this milk. He says, No, I haven't. He says, Drink from it. So I drank a bit. He says, Drink more. I drank more. He says, Drink as much as you want. He says, I drank to my full until when he told me drink. I said, There is now no place here. Then he said, Okay, now you can give it to me. And that is when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa drank a bit. And Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu says, This was a miracle because the milk was very little and look how all of us were quenched just by that milk subhanallah this was Abu Hurairah Abdul Rahman ibn Sakhr may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with him and be pleased with every single one of us so he says that once At-Tufayl ibn Amr told Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa I want you to pray against my people because I called them to Islam and they kept harming they kept disagreeing so Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa before he could say anything, Abu Huraira says, Oh, that's the end of those. Because he knew once Muhammad makes a prayer against those, the people of those, it's the end of them. But Muhammad did not make a dua or supplicate against them. Rather, he said, Allahumma di dosa. Oh Allah, guide those. And believe me, there came a time when they all accepted Islam. But this was Muhammad He was the one who did not make dua against people, rather for people. And I'm sure we know of the story of Ta'if when he made dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide the children at least of the people of Ta'if. So here we have Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu, one of the ulama of the Sahaba. Although he only met Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, three to four years before the passing away of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Let's say approximately four years. In four years, he learned so much and he memorized so much. He says, the only person who could compete with me in memorization of the hadith was Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As. And the reason is he could write and I don't write. I had to memorize. That was the reason. So people asked him, Oh Abu Huraira, how come you have memorized so much and you have only met Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for a few years, whereas there were others who were there for years on end and they have not memorized as much as you have. He says that was a gift of Allah and the dua of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He says one day I was sitting with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he said, who is going to lay their clothing here to sit and listen to what I have to say and Allah will grant them a memory that they will never forget what I have said. And he says, I was the first one who took my piece of cloth and I laid it down. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all a good memory. And he says over and above that, Zayd ibn Thabit radiallahu anhu says that I was with Abu Huraira one day and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came into the masjid. The two of us were seated with another man. So there were three in total. And as he came, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sat with us. And he looked at us and, and we had stopped. We were making dua and asking Allah. When Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sat in our midst, we stopped. So he looked at us and he said, carry on with what you were doing. So we said, we were asking Allah and they continued asking. So Zayd ibn Thabit says, I asked Allah, I asked Allah and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa kept saying, Ameen, Ameen. Then Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu raised his hands and he asked Allah. And he says, Oh Allah, give me what these two have asked and give me knowledge that I will never forget. Meaning a memory that when I learn something, I never forget. So Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa said, Ameen. And so immediately the two of them, Zayd ibn Thabit says, I immediately said, and what about us? Grant us also, Ya Allah, that which this man has asked. So Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa says, he has preceded you in this, subhanallah. 
meaning he said it and the Amin went out for him. And this was Abu Huraira. He did not forget anything so much so that Marwan ibn al Hakam, who was the leader at the time, he was the governor of Medina at one stage in the life of Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu towards the end. He wanted to test Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu. So he decided, let's call him. They called him and uh, they asked him, give us hadith. So he started reciting one after the other after the other that the Prophet ﷺ said this and he said this and he said this and he said this and so many hadith. And Marwan ibn al-Hakam had a scribe who was writing all these hadith and he wrote everything down. Then he told Abu Huraira, okay, you can go. One year later, he called Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu back and he says, oh Abu Huraira, a year back, I called you and I asked you to give us hadith. I want you to repeat the same hadith again. And now he had his scribes listening. And Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu repeated the ahadith without a single blunder, not in any name and not any difference of wording either. And that's when Marwan al Hakam said, this man is the alim. He is the most knowledgeable of the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Al-Bukhari rahmatullahi alayhi, the great compiler of hadith who has written the most correct book after the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed him with a lot of knowledge. Al-Bukhari rahimahullah says, Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu, he had taught more than 800 different people who have narrated from him or more than 800. Subhanallah. So when you hear Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu, if you look further up the chain, you will find names of more than 800 different people from amongst them, a lot of the Sahaba. So much so that the senior Sahaba radiallahu anhum used to go to him and ask him what Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam had said. This was Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu. And when they asked him that, how is it that you have memorized so much? He said, all of you were busy with your families and you were busy with your businesses and with all other things in terms of this world. I have no family, no business. I, I had nothing. I only used to work for a certain lady whose name was Busra binti Ghazwan radiallahu anha. And I worked for her with the condition that the only payment I get was food for the day. That's all. So I used to do some chores for her and I used to get food that, that I could actually fill my belly with. But I had no interest in anything else besides sitting and listening to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa So much so that the Sahaba radiallahu anhum say, Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu was the one who used to constantly stare at Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam without even blinking his eyes. He just used to stare and he used to say the most beautiful of all Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his face would eclipse the sun. That's how bright it was. Subhanallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. So Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu was a very pious person. He loved his mother a lot. But when he accepted Islam, he brought his mother along with him to Medina Munawwara and his mother did not like Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Every time Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu said something, his mother would utter bad words about Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So one day he came crying to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he asked him, what is wrong? He said, you know, I went to my mother and I called her towards Islam and the goodness of Islam and explained to her. And she started saying bad things about you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So I'm asking you to make a dua for her, to pray for her so that she is guided. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam there and then made a dua for her by saying, Oh Allah, guide the mother of Abu Huraira radiallahu an. He was so delighted that he rushed home to say, Hey, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has made a dua for you. Oh, my beloved mother. But you know what happened when he arrived home? He noticed that the door was closed and he heard some water. So as he was excusing himself to enter his own home, his mother says, wait where you are. She had a bath. She came out with the good clothing of hers. And she says, Oh, Abu Huraira, I bear witness that Allah is one and that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the messenger. And he was shocked. He was so happy, delighted. He actually came out rushing back to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, informing him that this is what has happened. And this was the result solely and only of the dua of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is why so many duas and supplications that have occurred in the life of Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu, every single one of them that was for him was granted. Subhanallah. This was the man Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu. He loved his mother so much so much that later on in his life, he became a very important person. And he always used to say, you know, Allah has blessed me 
I had nothing. I was an orphan. I had no wealth. I had no family. I had nothing at all. And I accepted Islam and came to Medina Munawwara with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Now I'm a married man. He married after Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's time later on. He says, now I have, Allah has blessed me and Allah has made me an Imam. There was a stage when he was appointed as the governor of Medina Munawwara by Muawiyah ibn Abi Sufyan. This was Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu. What a great man. He thanked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a lot. He was a person who used to pray the first third of the night. And then he would get up his wife to pray for the second third of the night. And then she would get him up in the last third of the night and he would pray. So that in his house there was someone praying for the entire night. This was Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu. He was a man whom Marwan ibn al-Hakam tested so many times once. Marwan ibn al-Hakam sent to him 100 dinars. And the next day, Marwan ibn al-Hakam sent a message or came to see him and told him, I made a mistake. I sent you money that was supposed to go to someone else. And they found that Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu, it was true that he never slept with money that, that was extra that he kept. So they found he, that he told Marwan ibn al-Hakam, look, I gave that money away to poor people yesterday in the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as soon as I got it. But when I get my salary at the end of the month, then you can take from it and cut it off and you give me the rest and the balance of my salary. Subhanallah. So Marwan ibn al-Hakam said, no, I was only testing you and it's okay. You can keep that wealth and it's yours. Allahu Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness and ease. Mar uh, this Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu, Abdurrahman ibn Sakhr radiallahu an. He saw two men walking, looking similar. One was a bit older and one was younger. So he asked the younger one, hey, who is he to you? He said, that's my father. He says, listen, never call your father by his first name out of respect. Number one, this was the advice of Abu Huraira to the man. Never walk in front of your father and do not sit before he is seated. Subhanallah. This means that Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu, although he did not have a father because he was an orphan, he is showing the value of the parents. Subhanallah. And I want to end with two stories. One is where Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu had once gone into the marketplace and he saw people there in the marketplace all involved in business. And he was, he told them, Oh, you people, you are involved in business, but you don't know the inheritance of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam is being distributed and you people are oblivious of it. They said, where is it being distributed? They want it. So he said, it's in the masjid. So they rushed into the masjid, which was very nearby. This was in Medina Munawwara. And they only saw people reading Salah and some others were reading Quran and someone else was uh, teaching the other what was halal and haram and so on. So they rushed back to Abu Huraira and said, Hey, where's the inheritance you're talking about? He said, you went to the masjid. They said, yes, what did you find there? So they said, we found someone reading Quran, someone teaching it, someone re reading Salah and someone uh, engaged in teaching the others what halal and haram is. So he said, that is the inheritance of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Whilst you are earning this wealth for the world, that is in fact the inheritance and that will take you into Jannah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all ease. So Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu, Marwan ibn al-Hakam visited him visited him at the end of his life. So he found Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu making a dua. And the dua was a beautiful prayer that Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu made. He said, Oh Allah, I love to meet you. And I pray that you love to meet me too. And I hope it is soon. So Marwan ibn al-Hakam said, what a man, what a great man. As he walked out, and he had taken a few steps. He heard of the death of Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu. He passed away in the year uh, approximately 57 Hijri at the age of about 80, uh, sorry, 78 approximately. And he is buried in Baqi'. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant him Jannah and grant all of us Jannah.